Put your hands together and let's give God some praise. Come on, I invite you just to stand on your feet and just begin to bless the name of Jesus. Come on, forget about what you've been through. Come on, forget about what you're going through. Because the Bible said, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. I dare you take 10 seconds, just close your eyes, just lift your hands and just begin to worship Him. Hallelujah. They say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just take five more seconds. Just lift your hands and just begin to worship God because he's worthy. Worship God. Worship God because he's worthy. Worship God because he's worthy. I owe God a praise because he's worthy of the praise. It's you, Sunday. Hallelujah. And we magnify his name. Come on, watch y'all help me sing this. I command my soul to bless the Lord say, I command my soul 
to bless the come on y'all got to say I command my soul to bless the Lord everybody say I command my soul say one more time I command to bless the Lord to bless the I command to bless the Lord command your soul I command come on even when you don't feel like it come on I tell my soul to bless him this is what I say I say this I say this that soul soul bless the Lord tell your soul Sheldon out this morning. Uh, he said, leap. And then said, he ain't seen none of y'all leaping. Sheldon, some of our knees don't get to work until about 12, but so you got to give them a little time. And, and the uh -huh. weather's a little colder now, so so you know you know how that tin man in, in, the, in the Wizard of Oz, you hear that cricket, cricket? Yeah, yeah. they ain't want y'all hearing that this morning, so yeah, you got to catch them when they get a little warmer, but isn't it just good to be in the house of the Lord one more time this morning? Yeah. In, in fact, can, let's, let's go a little further. Isn't it just good to be alive this morning? Yeah, 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 yeah. As we all know, it's the second Sunday. It's Youth Sunday in this place. And let, let me just take the time out to get everything out now before I forget. Um, on this morning, we started. I'm, I'm still trying to think of something else to call it. I, uh, some, 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 some young people, don't, they don't want to hear the word school. They, get, they do that Monday through Friday. So we had a... Um, we had a um, mm, mm, give me give me like to next month, and I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a creative term for it. But this morning was uh, the the beginning, prayerfully, and not the end of our um, time with the young people before church. Okay, that's a good way of saying it. And it was good to see some young people 
came out this morning, it was good to see some young people brought them. But let's go further. Now we even see a young person in the back doing ushering. Amen. Amen. It's just good. It's just good to see that we are trying to, to allow the young people to do something. In fact, I'm sorry, it's, it looks like it's two young people. Yeah, one is at the door. Um, the door is taller than he is, but he is doing his duty. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm trying to look around, and I'm going to catch their eyes. I guess I look at this. Um, since he's standing, he might be the one coming up here. I, I'm not sure if anybody was on the schedule. I, I couldn't decide. I didn't know. I didn't see anybody moving, so I didn't want to, to do something that was the way I was out of order. But we about to pray. We about to go into our prayer this morning. Uh, and what I'm going to ask is Michael Sims walk slowly up here. Sheldon, just give us a little bit of total praise. Just do a little bit of total praise as he makes his way up. As he makes his way up, if that's all right. If that's all right. Amen. 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 in spite of our faults, in spite of our imperfections, you didn't hold back anything you had from us. In fact, Lord God, quite the opposite. You gave us more than we deserved. So, Lord God, it's for all these things that you've done, Lord God, that we give you total praise this morning. We know that hallelujah is the highest praise, so we say hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, in this place. Lord God, because we know that it did not have to be this way. We know that the outcome could have been different. We may not have been able to come into your house this morning. But Lord God, you saw it fit to watch over us and to keep us, Lord God. You thought it not robbery to bless us and to put a hedge of protection all around us to allow us to get up this morning clothed in our right minds. Lord God, we're so grateful that we didn't find our 
bed had turned into our cooling board this morning. Lord God, we're grateful that we found that there was still food in the refrigerator, Lord God, that there was still a roof over our head, Lord God, that we still had more than two things to put on our back this morning. Lord God, we're so thankful. Lord God, that you decided to die for us, Lord God, that you decided that you would lay down our life and give us access to life and life everlasting. And then, Lord God, we stand here just in awe of the fact that after you've done so many things for us, Lord, that when you went to be with your Father, Lord God, you did one more thing for us when you left us an advocate that is the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit that we're able to call upon in the midnight hour, that Holy Spirit that we're able to call upon when we're in the hospital or when mama and dad are in the hospital, Lord God, we're able to call upon the name of Jesus. And you promised to do what you did so many other times. You promised that you would send your angels of healing. You promised that you would send peace. You promised that you would give us joy when tears were flowing. So, Lord God, right now we just stand here, Lord God, contemplating what it would be like without you, Lord God, and realizing that it's such a thought that we don't even want to think about life without you, Lord. Lord God, we just stand here trying to figure out how the people think they're getting through the day when they think they're not doing it without you, Lord God. Lord God, and we stand here praying for those that be outside the ark of safety right now, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that you would just touch them, Lord God. We ask that our lives be an example that they may see us and say, I need to know about this man named Jesus that you serve. I need to know what makes him so great. I need to know what makes him so worthy. I need to understand why you don't have a care in the world. I need to understand why when people talk about you or turn their backs on you, you still have a smile on your face. I need to understand why when times are rough on your job, you continue to say, oh, for a faith that will not shrink, Lord. And you continue. We continue on the journey knowing, Lord God, that you are carrying us when things are rough, Lord God. Knowing that you never leave us nor forsake us. Knowing that when the storms of life are raging, you carved out a cleft in the rock that we may hide. So, Lord God, we ask that you calm the storms in our lives right now, Lord God. We ask that you go into the hospitals, go into the rehab centers, go into the nursing homes right now, Lord God. You know everyone that stands in need of a blessing in this place. And, Lord God, while you bless us for our boldness, Lord God, we know that we don't have to say a single word, but thank you, Jesus. If we but call upon the name of Jesus, you know every concern of our heart. You know every thought in our mind. You know everything that we need. You know everything that we stand in need of, Lord God. You know what we need to be washed clean from, Lord. So we ask right now that you wash us in your precious blood. So, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, for already answering our prayer. We thank you for making the ways straight, Lord God. We thank you for taking the burdens and cares and concerns and taking them to the throne. And that's why we're able to stand here this morning, Lord God, having a hallelujah good time, giving you all the glory, the honor, and the praise that you so richly deserve. Bless our pastor, bless the musicians, Lord God. Bless the children that will be on the program this morning. So, Lord God, we just come to you. We come to you in the marvelous, matchless, mighty name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Jesus the Christ. And all who receive and agree with this prayer simply say the affirmation that is amen. Listen, before our young people come, can you all do me a favor? Because if we paid attention to anything this, this week, we, we saw first where there was a shooting at a school in Georgia, and then I believe it was in Hartford County. And right now the song is singing, you don't know what is done for me. And if, and if you sit here this morning and you have children or grandchildren or nieces or nephews who have gone out this week and gone to church, I mean gone to school, but because of the Lord, they've been able to go to school and come back home. Just sing that just for a little while for the young people. Because see, you don't know, you don't know what he done for me.
for me. Yes, Lord. Gave me, oh. gave me the victory. You don't know, you don't know what he's done for me. Gave me, oh. gave me the victory. One more time, you don't know what he's done for me. And when you got kids and you don't want people to know, this is what you say. You don't know. See, you don't even have to let the words come out because the Lord knows exactly what we're thinking before it comes out. So, so young people, you might not understand why mom and daddy were smiling, but it's because they looked at the news and they realized somebody sent their kids out and maybe their kids didn't get back home, but the Lord saw fit to be a fence and a hedge of protection all around you. So you can just say, you don't know. See, it's good sometimes when you can just think it to yourself and it's communication just between you and the Lord. And when it gets good and the tears begin to cry, you just look at it. You don't know. Because as long as Jesus knows it, it doesn't really matter what everybody thinks. Yeah, our kids get on our nerves sometimes, but in spite of all that, you don't know what he done for me yeah, yeah. gave me the victory and I love him I love him really love come on young people special grandparents is plain to see you are special as can be you can bake you bake cookies and hold our hands take us to the, take us fishing and play in the sand grandparents we are here to say we love you and today is your day
Take me out to the ball game. Let's go see our grandparents. Take us there for a while. Mommy and daddy both need a break. We'll play games and we'll stay up real late. Oh, we like to thank our grandparents for all the things that they say they do. So it's time to say you're the best and that we love you. If you are a grandparent, please raise your hand. We have something, a small token to say we love you. Peace. 
young people a hand clap one more time, please. Amen, amen. Is there anyone that is a grandparent that did not, that did not get a bag? We have more, okay, we got, they say there's more in the back. So I saw one hand, that's all I saw, I think. Let me look on this side. Anybody, everybody over here is good? Okay, so two hands, I got you. Okay, all right, thank you all, thank you. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for honoring us grandparents. That was so, so neat. But I got something I want to show you. Maybe you can help me with this. I can help you with it. You can help me with it, Mason. Thank you so much. Well, let's see. Come here, come here. I might, M M Mason said he could help me with it, so let's see if he can. Let's see. All right. So, there you go. There you go. So if I were to show you this, it doesn't look, it just looks dull, doesn't it? So in order for the light to come on, what would I have to do, Mason? Bend it. Bend it? For real? Yeah. That's like breaking it. Show me, Mason, show me. Get out of Dodge, look what Mason did. Mason fixed it for me and so it lit up. So. Mason, are you trying to tell me? Yeah. <laughs> he says, <laughs> so what Mason says is that in order for the light to come on in here, I have to bend it or crack it, or it, it's even broken. To me, it looks broken, but it's not broken, is it? What's happening? The light came on. Yeah. And, okay. So, so, so Mason, look, I thank you for trying to help me out. Can I give you this? Okay, that's yours, Mason. The, no, you can stay right there. Don't move. Don't move. So look, look. Sometimes things have to get broken for you to be able to see the real deal. And so with this light, just as Mason said, he had to bend it, crack it, or break it to make the light come on. Now look, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about some of those things in your life that seemed broken, but you learned from it. So look, this morning I broke a glass in my house just rushing around, dropped the glass and broke it, and it smattered all over the place. Did I learn something from that? Yes, I did. I learned that I cannot do 14 things at one time. Can't do it. I know, Mason, I know. 14? 14, Mason, I was trying to do all, ki all kinds of stuff at one time. And so I learned that if I want to be able to do things the right way, I have to sometimes realize that the wrong way is not the right way. So carrying all those things in my hand, running back and forth, didn't help me at all. But I learned that when I broke that glass, just as Mason broke this, um, this light, the light came on. In my head, the light came on and it said, dummy, don't be trying to do everything at one time. Don't do it. You know what? I know that a grandparent has said to you many, many times, take your time. Have they not said that to you? Take your time. Don't be rushing all around. Take your time. When they try to encourage you to, to smile, they say, smile pretty, and here you are looking all sad, but you learn that grandparents really care about you. So we need to sometimes realize what's broken in order to realize that things can be fixed. So I learned something this morning, and I hope you learned something. So Mason, this is yours, that's yours. The, the light is on, isn't that neat? I don't know how you turn it off, but the light's on right now. <laughs> but the light's on right now. So um, my lesson for you today is sometimes things don't seem right. They just don't seem right. Sometimes things get broken up but they will eventually come to show you and teach you a lesson. 
to look at Mason trying to, so if, if you think if I gave each one of you all one, you would be all right with that? You think so? <laughs> Can I? I'll take it out here because that, that'll make it. So look, I'm gonna give each one of you one. I now can show them how to do it. You can show them how to do it. Mason said he can show you how to do it. I one know for how you. To do it. One for you. Who did it? Who did it? Yes, she did. Oh. I can show you how to do it. <laughs> Mason is gonna show everybody how to do it. Did everybody get one over there? Now, here's what I want you to do. Listen to me. I can show you how Listen to me. Here's what I need you to do. Did, did um, Zayden get one? I can show you how to do it. Okay, now listen. I want you to crack your light. I so that You did it, look at you. So the light comes on. The light is on, so now just hold it up. Hold your light up. And you hold it up while I pray. How about that? Oh, let me get one. I need mine. I can show you how to do it. You can show me how to do it, Mason. Please show me how to do it. No, I know how to do it. No, Mason's going to show me. Mason's got this. There you go. There you go. So here we go. So let's let's pray. Shall we pray? Oh, Father, we no, thank you. No. Father, we thank you for all of your many, many blessings. We especially thank you. Father, for this day that we um, celebrate grandparents. Father, we thank you for their wisdom. We thank you for their patience. We thank you for the lessons that we have learned from each one of them. And so, Father, those grandparents who have passed on, we ask that you continue to keep them in our memory. Help us to keep them in our memory. Help us to understand that the lessons that they taught us should last forever. So, Father, we ask that you help us to keep the light on Keep the light burning. And these blessings we ask in our most holy name. Amen. I must have been praying too long because the children were saying amen, amen. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so as I'm looking around, I see at least three, I'm going to say. So it's two back there. All right, so it's two back there who didn't come up. Right. I know Drew can't come up on her own, but she's still a young person, so she might want to like two. I don't want any child to be left out. So I see some back there, Miss Pat, and I see Drew. I don't know. Is there any young child, young person right now that does not have a light? Because we want you all to have one. Aside from Drew and over in that corner near, uh, yeah, Miss Carlin, right behind Ron, yeah. No, Ron, we're not going to get one to you yet. <laughs> you can get one after service, Ron. You get one after service. No, that that road can't have one either. So, just sit on down, sit on down. Amen, amen. Now comes the time for us to give back to the Lord that which the Lord has blessed us with in our tithes and our offering. Tithes and offering. Come on, come on, ushers and junior ushers and. We gotta get Alan in the habit of looking back down. He didn't know what's going on. He's <laughs> if you have your offering ready, simply lift it up to the Lord. 
Gracious and all wise God, we come once again to give back to you that which you have blessed us with. Lord, we thank you for the gift. We thank you for the giver. And we ask, Lord, that you allow us to, to use these gifts to continue to build up the kingdom here on Queenstown Road. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remember, this is our second Sunday. So this morning, I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention. Okay, so, so Alan is going to be holding the plate for our tithes and offerings. Charlie, and I don't want to say the wrong name, that's um, Mason, yeah, yeah, Mason. Charlie and Mason, yeah, he holding, yup, the M stands for your name, yup, it sure does. But he holding a missions plate, they holding a missions plate. So use Charlie and Mason for your mission, Alan for your ties. You are now under the direction and leadership of the ushers. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to say. And I will praise you all my day. You're perfect in all your ways. Oh, oh, hell, Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. Because I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but yours be done. Hell, Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to say, And I will praise you all my day You're perfect in all your will Hey, help Jesus, you're my king Your life frees me to say, And I will praise you all my day you're perfect in all your ways. All things. sermonic selection and then after our sermonic selection the next voice that you will hear which we've heard her voice before in this place will be that of Marcy Ann Smith I'm going to ask her to come on up so she doesn't have to run after the sermonic selection so come on up Marcy Ann come on up Open the eyes of my heart Open the eyes of my heart I want to see I got to see Anybody's prayer? God. Open the eyes of my heart My heart, I just want to see you. Just want to see you. Can I just do it one more time? God. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I got it. I want to see you. 
Grandparents Day. <clears throat> and so today I am going to talk about perseverance. We all go through trials and tribulations, seasons of trouble. And sometimes we may wonder why, and we may ask God why. Take, for instance, Job. Look what happened to Job. Here is this godly man, a blameless, righteous man, subjected to suffering. His children died. He lost all his possessions. And he even got ill. He had, his body had sores all over. Job was going through it. My seasons of trial are nowhere near what Job encountered, but I think all of us have gone through situations, events, seasons that are uncomfortable and we can relate to Job on some level. But instead of asking why, or in addition to asking why, we should ask, what lessons can I learn? Notice that these seasons, these trouble, these troubled seasons, we go through them. They never last. We always say we're going through it and we get through it. It never lasts. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. In all, ways, in all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. We may not understand what, what goal God is trying to accomplish. We may not understand how just he is in this complex world that we live in, but God is great. 
God is powerful. He is wonderful. This is how wonderful God is. I'm going to talk about trees because I like trees. <laughs> God created these majestic, beautiful, living things that provide us with air to breathe. When we breathe out, in return, they give us oxygen. These, these beautiful things that God created also provides us with food. This is how great God is. Who could think about creating a living thing but God that gives us air and also gives us food? And if you look even closer to these trees, they're different. You have some that have small, uh, smooth barks, rough barks, scaly barks, their leaves. Some leaves have heart-shaped leaves. Some leaves have fan-like leaves. And these leaves, they even change color with the seasons. And don't get me started on the flowers. They're so pretty to look at. This is how wonderful God is, and he's always providing for us. So when we go through our trials, our rough patches in life, go to God. Just like Job, Job was angry with his situation. He expressed his anger to God. So tell God how you feel. Do not be afraid of him because he's not afraid of you because he created us. How is God supposed to be afraid of us? So tell him how you feel. In Job 19, verse 26, Job himself said, After my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Even through his season of long suffering, Job was aware that he would, that God will never leave nor forsake him. And in your, so in your season of trial, just like Job, we should all choose to cultivate a deeper, loving relationship with God. We should use our season to build trust with God. Ask God and yourself, what can I do? What can I learn? In doing so, we may gain fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5, verses 22 to 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, perseverance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things there is no law these things will help us to be a good steward to what we already have this this can be hard i i know because every day i try but god is good he is willing to help he wants to he wants us to be the best version of ourselves and so to the young people and everybody else in here, God wants us to know that he is near and he wants us to build a long lasting relationship with us. And to the young people again trying to figure out life, it is okay, it will be okay. Enjoy the process of growing up and use Use the time that you have to get to know God. That starts with reading your Bible. And it will be okay. God is with us. Thank you. Bless my way through. Bless my way through. Can't keep it up now. Gotta bless my way through. We're going to open the doors of the church, but know what gives me joy. The first time she spoke, this way she had the mic. This time she stepped up and she brought it in. See, what you all don't realize sometimes is um, it's not easy to get up and, and stand in front of anybody and speak. It's, it's even more difficult when you are a young person. And um, if we can just be honest with ourselves, um, this whole thing of having young people and young adults speak came out of a 
strategic planning meeting um, that we started and then stopped where we talked about Second Sunday and how we, how our prayers eventually that, this, that the young people and young adults run and are in charge of the whole service on the second Sunday. And we were sitting there wondering when we were going to start it. And somebody said, why we got to wait? Let's just do it. And I said, if you want to do it, fine, we can do it. Um, and you know, because sometimes, I, I, can, I, I can bug Michael Sims because he's not going to get mad at me no more. Sometimes we can't roll out things the way you want it to roll, be rolled out. Sometimes you got to roll it out the way the Lord wants it to be rolled out. And I can tell you that every young person, except maybe one or two who have stood behind this desk, um, the invitation came directly from me. It was no pressure. I said, if you don't want to, I'm not going to be mad at you. And I said that because I don't really want their parents to ask because that's pressure. Because sometimes as parents, we don't, we don't ask, we tell. And the reason we tell is because when we were younger, our parents told us, well, sometimes you got to ask. And sometimes if you ask a person, they'll say yes. So I'll probably miss somebody, but that's okay. So for the Zarells and the Marcians and the Megans and the Jasmines and the Jasons and the... I'm trying to think who else we've had up here. Um, I'm looking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, from the Michael, Michael A's. Um, I thank all of them for saying yes. And I pray it never stops. I pray we can get younger people up here because they all have a voice. And they all have something to say. And we just have to be willing to hear it. It might not come out the way we understand it, but if we don't understand it, I've learned that they have this thing called Google. And if you look the word up, it'll usually explain to you just what that word means. Um, I'm, I'm going to keep doing all I can with the help of the Lord to, to have young people stand up and say something. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something that some of you missed, but I didn't miss it. And I, I talked to her on a regular, and we keep talking about it. You had... um. Anna uh, Schlickert come stand before you. And before she spoke, she said one thing that I would never forget. This is the first church where I've seen them allow young people to get up here and speak. Maybe y'all missed that, but I didn't. And the reason I didn't is because she's the daughter of the district superintendent, which means she goes into more churches than a whole lot of us. So for her to say, this is the first church that she's seen where we letting young people, that speaks volumes. And that should make us feel like we're doing something. Not just on Queenstown Road, but in the Baltimore Washington Conference, we're doing something. And my prayer is eventually, not only does the, does the district superintendent come out on a second Sunday, but prayerfully one son, second Sunday, we'll get the bishop to come out and see how we are trying to get young people to not only be a part, but to have a voice in this place. Amen? Amen. The doors of the church are open. There may be one this morning who does not know Jesus for the pardoning of their sins. There may be one who does not have a church home. There may be one who realizes that they have fallen to the way, by the wayside of the road and they just want to come back and give their life to Christ. And this morning, if that's you, we invite you to come. We invite you to come up. We invite you to come. We invite you to come right before. If you don't want to come, raise your hand. Raise your hand and we'll come to you. We'll come to you. Young people, can you make your way up to this altar? I'm going to pray with you. I promise not to keep you up here any longer than two minutes and 30 seconds. And then after I pray with the young people, we're going to ask grandparents to come up and we're going to pray with the grandparents. We're going to pray with the grandparents. Listen.
Miss Helen, if there are any young people on the other side, can you ask them to come back over, please? Or to come on over. Come on, come on. Every young person, come on. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this day. God, we just thank you for us being here today, God. God, we hope that you protect us young children in school, God, or wherever we go, God. God, we want everywhere we walk to be a safe place, God. God, we hope that you protect us wherever we go, God. God, I hope that you send angels over us as we sleep, God, and that you bless us with your special blessings that you have for us, God. God, we pray. Every young children here will have something special to do, God. Yes. God, we pray that you will help them get shady to school for them to focus, God. God, we, help, we hope that you give every young person a special gift, God, to use to serve you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I trust in God. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, young people. All right, grandparents, come on, grandparents, come on. One minute and 30 seconds. Continue to give us the strength, Lord, to persevere just for a little while longer, God. Lord, anyway, you keep us and bless us, Lord. Not only today, but every day you allow us to get up, Lord. We'll be ever so careful and mindful to give your name all the honor and all the glory and the praise. 
powerful and precious, magnificent and marvelous name of Jesus, who is the Christ. All of us say amen, amen, and amen. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why, that's why I trust him. for our young people? Can we thank the Lord for our speaker? Can we thank the Lord for our ushers, our, our Sunday school? Now it's been told to me this morning that they have some cake for the grandparents. Now look, y'all know y'all don't need no cake. <laughs> but we're gonna allow y'all to get a little piece anyway. You know, y'all know y'all eat too much sugar. You know what's going to happen to y'all, yeah. See, it has the reverse effect on us that it has on young people, yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, after we do the benediction, I'd ask that you all go into the fellowship hall. I, I pray that they are ready for us. The other thing, um, this, is, this is not, or well, the pastor's okay with it. Brother Nat, Brother Nat came up with something. Um, Brother Nat, this morning, he sent out a text to the lay servants saying that they could, if they wanted, join him and represent their teams today. And when we got here, see, yeah, see, I'm about to help you out, Aaron. When, when I got here and he said it, my question to him was, why did they have to just go out to the secret society? Why couldn't we just ask the entire congregation? So what we're going to do since it's youth Sunday, and I know the young people will definitely not mind wearing their favorite jersey or whatever, whether it's high school or college or uh, the NFL, doesn't matter. Uh, second, second Sunday now, you wear your jersey if you like to. Now, some of y'all, make sure y'all don't be wearing no jerseys that nobody knows what your jersey is about or who it's for. If you got run out, order one. You got three to four weeks to order something. Don't be coming in here with no name talking about this from the 19th. Ain't nobody, we're not going to know that. We're not going to know that. We give you an no, I'm just playing with you. Uh, wear whatever you want, whatever jersey you want, if you want to. Uh, yeah, um, now I'm out here, you know, college, NFL. I'm, wear a baseball jersey if you want. Doesn't matter to me. We're just going to be calling it Jersey Jersey Sunday for a while. You know? Just to, just to represent your team. If you want to wear one that says Jesus, don't matter to me. I know they got them, so get whatever you want. But I believe all minds are satisfied. I don't think I forgot anything. Um, so if, yes, I did, and I need to look at Odaris. When did we say we were having that meeting? Thank you. Sunday, October 13th, we will be having our pre church conference meeting after service. I will make sure it gets sent out. October 13th, the second Sunday of October, we will have our pre-church conference meeting to get ourselves ready for our church conference, which will be the 24th of October. If we are able to, can we stand all over the building? Can we stand all over the building and look to be this list? Again, good.
good to know that Miss Gertrude is home and she's feeling better. Keep um, at Mr. Churchill lifted in prayer. I was able to see him. Um, we had a good time. I can't tell y'all everything we talked about, but um, I can tell though. Well, they're not there. Yeah, I I got him back. Um, I, I told him I was coming to pick him up at midnight. I told him I'd get him back before the nurses would even know he was gone. So. Obviously, he's there because nobody's called saying, have anybody know what Mr. Churchill's doing? But we were able to get over there and see him, and he's doing pretty good. Also, some of, from what I heard uh, and what I've seen, some of the lay servants were able to get over and see Gerald. Uh, from what I heard, um, a couple people took Mr. John Griffin out. So just let's not forget those who we know have been instrumental and an important part to this congregation. Let's not forget them. Call them, send them a card, stop by and see them. Um, contrary to what we sometimes think, it is not just the pastor's job, nor the lay servant's job. We are all ministers in his name. So just go by and see somebody. Because guess what? One day it's going might be us. And we will want people to do the same for us. So just stop by and see the people. Bring them something to eat. Um, you know, just, just stop by and see them. For those of you who have already received it this month, yes, I'm checking in via phone call. And I'm telling you ahead of time, if you don't answer the phone and it's a generic uh, greeting on your answering machine I don't leave a message what I do is I send you an email to make sure I have the right number I don't want to leave a, no a message with somebody and they sit home talking about who is this man talking about hey Rhonda how you doing and nobody named Rhonda lives here amen so yes if, if you don't if you don't get a message that's why and once I know it's your number then I will definitely leave a message can we pray Lord we thank you for this Sunday we thank you for the fact that you once again blessed us and kept us so, Lord, right now, as we prepare to leave from this place, Lord, I ask that you go with us, go before us, grant us safe traveling mercies, Lord. Be a fence and hedge of protection around us, Lord. Walk on our paths, Lord, and remove anything and everything that seeks to do us harm, Lord. And if it be your will, Lord, bring us back on next Sunday, still filled up, still on fire, still in a good mood, still ready to just come praise your name, Lord. Lord, right now, all of your children realize how good you've been to us. I simply say, can we say amen, amen, and amen. Go in peace. Go in peace. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I took him. That's why I took him. I saw the Lord. y'all standing here I didn't do announcements my announcement is I hope y'all read them if not go home watch the replay